going to start with the obligatory slide. I'm with the American Society of Civil Engineers. We have a uh, what we call the ASCE library, which are, is our journals and our uh, books and proceedings online. That's our platform. Uh, we use Adipon. Uh, and uh, we got a lot of stuff up. We're not by any means uh, as large as JSTOR, for instance, uh, but uh, we've, you know, got a over, well over 100,000 pages up, and uh, we like to add to it uh, about 4,000 journal articles a year. No, 3,000 journal articles, 4,000 proceedings papers, 40, 50 books. Um, it's a lot of content for a niche market. Okay, uh, as Margie was indicating, this talk is a bit of a bait and switch. I volunteered for this, um, I don't know, last June or so, because <laughs> I had just given a talk at the Adipon User Conference on their brand new taxonomy management tools. And I thought, wow, you know, I, I, uh, I was kind of the first customer who was in there, and I got a chance to see it, and we learned some stuff. I work with Bob. Uh, to get an upload of our taxonomy, and we did a kind of a rush uh, tagging of our back file, and we loaded tags in, and you know, just finding out how all that stuff worked. And I thought, well, you know, this is cool. It, it was kind of a draft, uh, just sort of where we were because we were right in the middle of a rule building project. But I thought, wow, you know, we're, we're there. We're, we're ready to go. Uh, uh, you know, in six months for sure, I'll have lots of cool things to say at, at DHUG. Um, guess what? Not so much. Um, so, where we really are, uh, we have finished the taxonomy development, at least for the time being. Uh, anybody who has a taxonomy knows that it's never really finished. Um, we have about 2,400 preferred terms and about 25 to 2,600 non-preferred terms. Um, I think we have something well over 8,000 rules, but a lot of those are TTMs, text to match, so I didn't really count them. Um, I consider the rule building the complex rules, uh, and we have over 800, which uh, uh, right there is, uh, well, our preferred terms, we have 71% of our preferred terms are used in a rule somehow. Civil engineering is kind of tricky. There are an awful lot of words that are just words in the English language that are used uh, very specifically for concepts in civil engineering, but they're also used more broadly. So if you don't write rules, you're going to have an awful lot of noise in your tagging. So we did need to do a lot of work on that. Um, Access Innovations really helped in terms of kicking off the rule building. Uh, but then uh, she Van Fleet, who's my manager for uh, databases and taxonomy, uh, did um, a huge amount of work reviewing all of that stuff and finalizing it, and so that's where we are. Uh, however, the thesaurus is not currently uploaded to the Adipon uh, admin tool. Uh, the retro tagging is not complete. Uh, the forward flow for new tagging is not in place. And uh, all of the implementation options that we have been considering are still being considered. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> we have for many years have what we call the Civil Engineering Database, which is a bibliographic database for all of our content, not just the ASCE library, but really everything we've ever published that we can identify and lay hands on and get enough information to put together a bibliographic record. Of abstract metadata. A lot of these older records are skeleton records. Um, and we've had this going on for well over 20 years now. Um, however, it was created in a proprietary software, and the company that has been supporting it for all these years uh, would like to not support it. They, uh, they, were bought, they were bought out by somebody a few years ago, and they've kind of changed their business model. And you know, we're a legacy customer, so they're willing to service us, but they really would like to get rid of us. So. Um, uh, we've been talking for a while about uh, moving to an XML database native to XML or at least just moving. And we've actually tried this a couple of times before. In one memorable instance, uh, she, Van Fleet, worked with a guy. Uh, both of them spoke Chinese, so it was kind of interesting walking past their office and they were just yakking away about you know, how to create a database for our bibliography. Um, and, uh, but that, that project was a fail. And it was such a fail that that poor guy actually got fired. So um, we knew that this was not quite as easy as it looked just to create a bibliographic database. Anyway, uh, I was aware of SIS, of course, and since it was integrated already with Maestro, which we are using to manage taxonomy, um, 
we thought that we should investigate working with Access Innovations to develop it. The other thing is that, um, as I think I mentioned, CEDB has been in a proprietary software that is not native XML. There are a huge number of coding issues, particularly uh, to get uh, UTF-8 characters uh, to be able to be used in that and displayed in that software. So um, one of the advantages of going with SIS or any other native XML database would uh, be that we would not have these coding issues. So that was attractive. So this project, hmm, I guess we signed the paperwork on it around at the SSP meeting last year and started in the summer. And uh, I would say we're still in development. Um, and I'm getting into this a little bit, not as deeply as some of you might like, but I haven't seen a whole lot of information at previous DHUGs on SIS. Uh, so it's a product area that, that we didn't know that much about, so I, I do want to talk about it a little bit. Um, we started out with the DTDs. Uh, Margie mentioned in her presentation this morning that uh, the whole thing is driven by a DTD, and we thought, well, we're using uh, these DTDs for journals and books <coughs> on the Adipon platform or ASCE library, so that at least would tell us what all those tags uh, were that we needed. Uh, so we started with that. Uh, we also had all the fields that we have in the civil engineering database. Uh, that's a relational database, not an, uh, uh, like an XML database. So there, there was a little bit of difference there. Um, this uh, STAN, the number of XML tags in SIS, uh, we pegged that at about 152, and that was last week. Uh, as of yesterday, <laughs> it was she and... Uh, Wynn and I sat down and we really went through all of this stuff in great detail. Um, and we edited uh, all of these fields or elements uh, heavily. And we dropped some and I think we added a few. So I actually don't know how many uh, tags we have now, but there's a lot of them. Uh, doc types, 54. I think when uh, we started this, we were kind of thinking, okay, we have journals and we have books. So that's two doc types. I think that's what Margie's concept here was. Oh, this will be easy. There are two doc types. There's journals, there's books. Why three? Guess what? <laughs> um, it didn't turn out to be quite that easy. Uh, one of the main reasons for that, it, you know, this is me talking. This is not some other people talking. One of the main reasons for that is sort of how this stuff looks in terms of how it is on the page. If you have all 150, or, or maybe not even 150, but let's just say 100 fields that are applied to journals and 100 fields that apply to books, and these fields are just all over the page. And for some books or journals, some of the fields are populated and other ones aren't. And you can't even tell what you're looking at on the page. So you have to have some way to manage it. And the way we managed it was we said, OK, for these types of records, we need exactly these fields. And then we had to define the doc type as being <coughs> each of the fields that went with each of those kinds of records. So uh, is there a better way to do this? Uh, honestly, I don't know. Um, I guess that's something that we may, may learn more about over time. But um, at the moment, that's, that's kind of what we had to do. Uh, we also have a large number of authority files. Um, this can be anything from an awards list, like uh, we have society awards that uh, an author might have received an award and we want to keep a record of it. But we don't want to have to worry about typos or, um, you know, did somebody capitalize the last name of the, the award? Uh, so, um, you know, things like that are authority files. Actually, we have a lot of them. Um, Contributors, uh, Margie alluded to this, uh, contributors in this case refers to authors and editors for us. Um, that's really in a separate database. So um, that's something we have to pay attention to also, what, what elements we are keeping that refer to authors and editors specifically. <clears throat> and then there, were, there, there was one big thing that I'm going to call a relational element, though you know, people who deal with databases might not like that term particularly. Um, when you have an article level record, you know what the uh, article title is, you have the authors, you may have an abstract for it, whatever. But there's also some information that refers to the journal issue itself, uh, such as what is the title of the journal, what is the volume, what is the issue, what is the year. Um, 
What is the CODEN? What is the ISSN? That stuff does not change um, in terms of going with a particular article. An article has to relate to its journal, and you don't want that stuff editable on a particular individual record. So what we have is a massive authority file of all of our journal issues, and I believe there's over 9,000 of those at present, and obviously we're adding a couple hundred each year uh, to that list. So that, that is not what you call a drop-down menu. Um, so we had to kind of work with Access Innovations to figure out exactly how we were going to treat that information, uh, whether all of it had to be somehow replicated but not necessarily editable in each article level record or where, whether we would do it as an authority file, and that's, that was the final decision. Um, we have a similar issue with books uh, or proceedings papers where you have the paper level or the chapter level information and then you have to relate it back to the book. And again, you don't want to be editing <coughs> the book level information in the chapter or paper level record. So, <coughs> um, anyway, there were some challenges for that. There were some other tricky issues that we found. Uh, one of these has to do with ISBNs and connecting them with uh, the format or with other information uh, that we have. For instance, best practice now is uh, that you associate an ISBN not just uh, with, you may have a main ISBN that goes with your, say, your print book, but if you have an electronic version, a PDF, you may have a different ISBN for that. You may have a third ISBN for an EPUB. You may have another ISBN that you assign later on for some other format that hasn't been created yet. Those ISBNs are specific to the format and you have to specifically associate them. You can't just sort of throw them all in there with your book record and say, yeah, we have three ISBNs that relate to this book. Uh, similarly for print, we have a field where we indicate that something is out of print. Uh, again, that's not a random thing. It's, it's not just a random piece of information that goes with the record. It goes with a very specific ISBN. So, um, Access Innovations had to do some programming and figure out exactly how to make things like that work. Um, in other words, it, <coughs> it's complicated. <laughs> um, the, I'm just going to show quickly a couple of slides, and I don't. I think Margie's actually were a little better, but these were the ones I had. Um, this is our list of authority files, and actually, it's not complete, but. Um, you know, you would click there and then you could go in and actually edit the, the files themselves if you want to add a term or delete something or whatever. Um, this is our search screen, at least as it was last week. Uh, in theory, it lists all of the fields or elements that are available. Um, this is kind of a mess because we haven't at the time that we did this, uh, we had not finalized the field list, which was a lot of what we were thinking we were doing yesterday. Um, and then once the final, num the final fields are set, then we want to alphabetize it, because at the moment, it's all over the block. So you can't really find anything. Um, the other thing that we have become aware of is that we have to indicate which of these fields are actually indexed. Because you think you can just click on them and, and that thing will be searched, but it won't be if it hasn't been indexed. So, you know, there's layer upon layer of little complications here that until you kind of get behind the scenes, you kind of don't know about. Um, this is a drop down for our doc types. And uh, again, it's mainly to just show there was a lot of them. The other thing is there, there are all these codes there. And I mean, I've spent a lot of time with this. Uh, she can almost read the codes, I think. She can look at them and know exactly what she... I can usually look at them and kind of parse it out. I think anybody else would kind of have a tough time with this, but um, we do try to um, have just enough information that we can find things. Um, this is one of our doc types, the, the actual record, and this is what I mean. Uh, this one actually is complete for the particular doc type that it is, which is a corporate, there's certain kinds of corporate publications that we have. Anyway, you can see what all, how many fields are there. And you can also see this sort of layout that just goes all the way across the screen. And we've done a lot to try to organize information so that the things that we need to see together 
are together, which meant that we completely messed up the DTDs that we started with. Um, and they don't match jets. They don't match jets anymore. And, you know, there's the part of me that kind of regrets that, but then the other part of me is like, if anybody's trying to work in this, you just can't, you just have to have it organized in a way that you can work in. So here's where um, Margie was um, uh, hoping I would go easy on them. Um, <laughs> I hate this user interface. <laughs> Uh, you want to know how I real, really feel? Uh, it's, it's very, very, very difficult actually to work in. We are hoping that once data is in there, it will become a little bit more clear what we're looking at. And we have done some things where we worked with Wynn yesterday to uh, change you know, the width of some of these and you know, figure out which ones need to be deep and which ones may need to be shallow and you know, how all of that works. Um, but this is not a user interface that anyone but a programmer could love, and I don't even know if programmers love it. Um, now, it's certainly pretty hard on those of us, uh, well, she in particular, who's going to have to use it. So we are hoping over time that <coughs> we can help think of uh, better ways of doing some of this. Okay, um, this, just, this is just the contributors um, or the author and editor list. Um, on the previous one, there's basically a, a little contributors block that's a drop down, and you would click on an author name and then go to that author's record for that particular thing. We have not started working with Access Innovation on an actual author database that includes all the author <laughs> disambiguation. So, you know, if Marjorie Lava, Margie Hob Lava, MK Lava, and anybody else is in there, she's in there 63 times, you know, as each time she appears on an article. Um, you know, she's basically got a contributor, um, or any variation of her name has basically got a contributor um, screen, and they're not linked at this point in time. Okay, back at the Civil Engineering Database, which we haven't gotten rid of yet, uh, we've been kind of busy because in, in order to migrate to this new system, there is a bunch of things that we kind of needed to do. Uh, the first thing had to do with uh, converting some subfields to independent fields because, um, well, an XML database is kind of flat. It's, it's, it's not handled in the same way a relational database is. So we had to figure out which things were independent elements and um, uh, in some cases move data around or figure out how to make it work so that when we export the data we could do that. Um, obviously, uh, scrubbing data is an ongoing process. Uh, she is on that and, and other people are on that kind of full time. Anytime you see an error, anytime you see certain kinds of inconsistencies, you're trying to clean that up. And particularly, we wanted to do that before export. Uh, the one element that was not in CEDB that was in ASCE library was book chapter level records. Uh, we have them in ASCE library for books that have chapters have XML for that, but we had not put it in CEDB, and now we kind of need to. So there's about 500 of those, and we're in the process of doing that. Um, we recently discovered an external source that had a lot of abstract and um, author information, like affiliation information, on our content that we did not have. Uh, they had created it over the years, and for reasons of their own, had made it possible to export it. So we took it. And now we're in the process of uh, loading it in so that our database will be as complete as possible when we do a final export. <coughs> um, we also needed to map the civil engineering database fields to the XML tags so that uh, we can have a, a smooth um, uh, import or ingestion process. Uh, so she's been working on that and then uh, preparing the export. So uh, that's actually in progress, I don't know, today, tomorrow, the first round. Uh, next steps, we need to adjust the data uh, and then identify any problems, things that we just can't see because, you know, you, you've got data over here and data over there, and if it fits, that's fine, and if it doesn't, then hopefully you'll get a report and figure it out. So that's, that's a big issue. <coughs> um, if we identify any missing elements, then uh, Wynn will have to help us and Alex will have to help us to finalize the SIS app. We're, we hope we're close. Uh, we're not positive, but we hope. Um, next big issue is develop and test forward flow. 
great. We get all of our current CEDB data into the database, and then what? You know, because they don't, it doesn't, publishing doesn't just stop. We've got new stuff coming in literally every day. So um, we have to figure that out. One of the big issues for us is certain kinds of validation. Um, we're not really sure how it works yet. And that's something that we have a lot of built into our civil engineering database. But then again, that's been developed over 20 years. And uh, we need to figure out what we can legitimately do and uh, in an automated way and what uh, may need to happen in a, a manual kind of review way. Uh, and then who's going to do it. Uh, <coughs> and then we need to develop some standard exports, things that we know that we're going to need to be able to do. Um, in theory, this is all much easier. You just kind of pick fields and organize it and shazam it. It's ready to go. Um, I hope that's true. I don't really know yet. We'll be finding out. <clears throat> okay, so you might be wondering, what about taxonomy? This is the bait and switch part. Um, <laughs> uh, <coughs> because <coughs> that was sort of the whole point, is we thought, We've been developing this taxonomy that we have for since 2009. And you know, every year, every year, I have thought, well, this is the year. We're going to implement this. We're going to have uh, all the tagging done. We're going to be able to display it. We're going to be able to uh, use it as part of search. We're going to do all kinds of things. Um, not yet. However, Sys and Maestro are integrated, so that will help a good bit in terms of um, tagging issues and, and any additional uh, uh, work that we can make more efficient by having those two things in the same place. I mean, I've lost count of the number of databases that we are actually using in our publishing process now, but um, having anything that is already pre-integrated is, at this point, a godsend. Um, we do need to select for, for final, for sure, which content we're going to tag. Uh, this has been a source of considerable debate. Uh, we are not tagging full text. We are assuming that the most important information about an article is in the title, subtitles, abstract, and there's some other things like some section headings that we believe we can use. Um, we don't want to be tagging uh, front matter, back matter, editorials. We certainly don't want author affiliations in there. Um, that will be uh, very, uh, that can skew things majorly if you're trying to figure out, you know, what's going on in a particular location. Um, uh, you don't want to know the author's location at that point. You want to know the location of the river or the bridge or, you know, whatever the um, item is. So we're looking at what content and what elements uh, are, are being tagged. Uh, make the first pass at the tagging and then review the tagging results the, using the statistical reports that are available to us or asking Access Innovations to pull some additional reports. How are we doing? I mean, we're not going to be checking every one of 70,000 articles, but we do need to have, do enough checking to validate um, what we're doing and be comfortable with it uh, going forward. Um, exporting the taxonomy and the tag set to uh, Adapon's Literatum platform is actually not that difficult. We know what to do and how to do it. Um, so once we have all of that um, uh, information in place, we'll be able to do that quickly, I think. And then the forward flow will include machine-aided indexing for new content, but it will also include manual review by Xi, who has been manually tagging all of our content for about 15 years now. <coughs> um, so I work for civil engineers. They're really big on infrastructure. I feel like all I'm doing is infrastructure. <laughs> I would really, really, really like to be doing some of these other things, implementing things like the type ahead for search with preferred and non-preferred terms, displaying the taxonomy tags, and then using those to filter content. Um, my boss is really into visualization, so I've got to find something that's going to satisfy him on that. Although, you know, honestly, visualizing a 2400 term taxonomy is not easy. Um, the ones that I've seen, um, yeah, it's messy. There has, to be, there has to be a way. There has to be a way, and we'll, we'll have to find it. Um, <clears throat> topic pages, something that we've been talking about for a long time. Um, 
not quite sure how we're going to implement it. Uh, uh, Adipon has a solution themselves that they are pushing. Uh, whether that is the best approach or whether uh, we do other, some other kind of, I don't know if I want to say manual cur curation, but some other kind of uh, faceted curation such as was described by JSTOR. Um, I think that's I think we're still thinking about it. We know we want it. We don't know exactly how we're going to get there. Uh, the recommender widget is another thing that, of course, we want. And there are at least two or three different ways that we know we can get there. So it'll be a matter of picking which one we think is going to be the best approach. Oops. Uh, let's see. I think I lost a slide in there, but it can't possibly have been very important. Um, I do, however, want to thank uh, various people because uh, this is, as has been noted before, not a one-man band. Um, I don't know how anybody can do it that way. Uh, we have a whole team of people at ASCE who do various aspects. Uh, uh, she Van Fleet is actually the lead on most of them. Uh, but she does get significant support on other things. But if you have questions on taxonomy and rule-based development and preliminary questions on CIS, um, I think she'd be interested, or just in database stuff. Uh, she knows quite a lot, actually. Um, Access Innovations, <laughs> I've probably left somebody off, in which case I'm very, very sorry. Um, we've been working closely with Wynn on this project. Uh, Samantha Lewis is our taxonomy uh, person, but she's also been involved in the CIS project. Scott and Alex have been the programmers. Gina's no longer here, but she was helpful in, in getting things off the ground, so we appreciate that. Uh, Fuse Solutions is the platform host for our current civil engineering database, and Candy has been uh, incredibly helpful in getting both things ready to export and helping us work through issues that we needed to understand better in order to move into this environment. So uh, thanks for your kind attention. If you have questions, let me know uh, either now or just, you know, I'll be here. So.